Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be discussing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be talking about Canon cameras and are they still worth buying in 2019? There's two reasons I've made this video. The first one is that Canon recently reported a significant drop in sales for their cameras. And also, I've been a Canon photographer and videographer for, well, since day one, since I first started. So I've got a very good uh, insight and experience with Canon cameras. But I don't want you to think it's biased because if you've been on the channel for a while, you'll know that I've actually done plenty of videos and reviews on other brands such as Sony, Fuji, and also Panasonic to name a few. So I've got a quite a wide scope and a wide understanding of exactly what's available now for you to buy and if Canon cameras are worth buying. So let me start with this. Let me start with photography. We'll break this down into two parts. We'll start with photography and then we'll move on to video. When I started taking photos with my Canon camera, I was over the moon. But was I over the moon because it was a new camera and everything was new and exciting? Perhaps. But to this day, in 2019, and I'm recording this in June, everything that I need from a Canon camera, photography-wise, is definitely there and available to me. So the main kind of key components that are important to me are autofocus. The autofocus needs to be clean, crisp, and quick. And it is. It's always in focus, and it locks onto focus quick. So that's a tick for me. The next thing, and this is, this is often overlooked, actually, is uh, color, color science. Color science is, is important because what you've got to remember is not everyone watching this video is actually a professional photographer. Some of you are hobbyists or even some of you are just getting your first camera. So not everyone's going to be shooting raw and then editing their photos after in something like Photoshop or Lightroom. And because of this, it's important to have a nice, accurate, color science. Let me explain. So color science basically is when you take a photo, what you see with your eye is represented in the camera as almost the same. And this can be important if you're shooting JPEGs and you just wanna go out and take pictures that you've got this really nice, beautiful color system like the Canon cameras offer. So that's two things which are really important for me. The third thing, and this could be arguably probably the most important is the ease of use. If you're working with a client, say you are a professional photographer, you don't wanna be thinking that you've gotta kind of work your way in your head through your menu system because it's very overcomplicated and quite clunky. A bit like Sony's menu systems. Now, I don't wanna say anything bad about Sony because Sony cameras right now are probably the best all round on the market, but their menu systems are not nice. But the camera um, menu system which you get on Canon cameras is very, very good. It's good because it's easy to understand, it's easy to use. So if you're a beginner photographer and you start with a Canon, there's no overwhelm, there's no stress. You can just get on with the menu system and figure it out quite easily. Also, you've got the articulated touchscreen, which is, makes it a lot easier to navigate the menu, which is great as well. So for me, photography-wise, Canon cameras are definitely still relevant in 2019 and worth buying. I will say that reviewing these other brands like Fuji, uh, Panasonic and Sony, they do have some extra features which you may not find on the Canon cameras, but a lot of times you don't need these features and you will never really use them. So they're just kind of there for show. I will say uh, Sony cameras have fantastic dynamic range and uh, so do Fuji actually. Um, but this is not really that important and sometimes it's it's pushed up there as being the most important thing when really it's not. If you're struggling with exposure, you can always capture a couple of different photos to get that dynamic range. Anyway, I digress. Let's jump into video. Now, I've always shot with video uh, or I've always shot with Canon cameras for video as well. And Canon cameras for video have always been very reliable. They've always had fantastic autofocus so the dual pixel autofocus is spot on and it's really nice that when you're shooting a video, you just get that feeling of 
you just feel comfortable because you know that you're not going to be out of focus because of how good the autofocus system is. Saying that, Canon cameras have a big, big problem. And the big problem is with the 4K. So I know a lot of you might be thinking, okay, well, 4K is not that important because not everyone uses 4K. But if you've been on YouTube lately, you'll see that when you scroll down the search and go through the videos, how many people are and now shooting with 4K? I mean, lots, probably, probably close to half. So whereas about a year to two years ago, 4K was the future, 4K is most definitely the present. And Canon cameras are far behind when it comes to 4K. I say far behind. The 4K is just as good, but it comes with some problems, some issues. Let's discuss them. The first one is the crop. Recently, I shot with the Canon 250D, which is honestly a really nice DSLR. It's a great starting camera, uh, it really is. But the problem is you've got a crop on there of 2.4 times which means that if you're shooting with, uh, I don't know, 16 millimeter lens, it's around about 35, 37. My maths aren't very good. Um, but it means that you're gonna have to, if you want to shoot the same focal length as you would with the 1080p uh, camera system, then you would need to change the lens and then you'd need to use a wider angle lens for that. This is not a deal breaker though, is it? Because you can just use a different lens. But if you haven't got another lens, then it's gonna cost you money or you're gonna to have to sell the lens and buy another one. But I think the biggest problem for me with the 4K on Canon cameras is the autofocus. They don't employ the dual pixel autofocus, which has made the Canon camera system so renowned for video previously, but they actually use a contrast-based autofocus system, which is really not very good. So it's unfortunate to say this and it kind of really makes me sad because everything else about the video is great. But if you're looking at it from a videographer standpoint and someone that wants to look to the future for making videos or even the present, like I said, then unfortunately I do think there is better options now than Canon cameras for video. So yes for photography, but if it was me now and I was buying a new camera, I probably wouldn't use Canon for video. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into the Canon camera system and if it's really worth buying in 2019. The most important thing is, is your choice. This is just my opinion as a Canon photographer. And you know, it's what really stands out to you. So for instance, if you're not interested in video, then you should definitely consider a Canon camera. But if you're interested in getting the most out of your video and you want 4K as an option, then there are better choices out there. Anyway, guys, I wanna thank you for watching today. If you're new here, then please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos every single week. And whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.